What's going on traders? It's Ricky with Tech Solutions. So for today's video, I'm gonna be doing another breakdown on how to use TD Ameritrade Thinkorswim. Um, I'm not gonna be going live on this one, so this is actually gonna be a film and edited version, so it should be a little bit better quality. Uh, I'm also gonna go into a little bit more depth on how I have my TD Ameritrade set up, uh, kind of what the different indicators mean, uh, and getting uh, like in a little bit more depth um, the whole breakdown on kind of how to use the platform and how I use it and stuff like that. So um, overall, I hope you guys enjoy this video. Um, I do want to let you guys know that the reason I'm making this video um, is due to a number of people that I did to um, or had one to one consultation calls. Uh, they just had a little bit of trouble making the transition over from TD Ameritrade, uh, I mean from Robinhood over to the TD Ameritrade brokerage company because it is a little bit more advanced. So I really hope that you guys enjoy this clip. And if you guys do, please feel free to give it a thumbs up. If you guys aren't a part of TechBot Solutions, the link is down below. I want to thank you guys again for everything that you guys do. Let's do it, team. So this is, again, the TD Ameritrade Thinkorswim platform. If you don't have access to this platform already, I am going to put the link for you down below if you guys would like to download it. Again, it is a free platform as long as you are within the United States. If you're not within the United States, uh, then some other brokerage companies, you might want to navigate yourself or navigate uh, to our TechBot Solutions Facebook group as other people um, suggest, like, you know, you stock trader, you uh, sure trader and, and different other uh, brokerage firms uh, that are outside the U.S. Um, and stuff like that. So feel free to check that out. Uh, but this is going to be solely on TD Ameritrade on how I personally have mine set up um, and, and, you know, kind of the whole mechanics um, of it. So um, I have different frequencies set up and you can customize the list. So you can just go right over here um, and you can go to one minute, one minute, five, and you can edit or, you know, remove depending on what your preference is. Um, I really don't like the three day, one minute. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click edit um, and I'm going to change that to three day um, and 20 minute frequencies uh, just so it looks a little bit nicer. And by doing that, I can click OK. Uh, and then by doing the three minute, 20 minute, um, it gives me a better breakdown uh, through a three day analysis. Usually if I do the one minute, three day uh, frequency, it will only show me one day because there's so many, um, you know, uh, candlesticks that are uh, being displayed. So um, this is pretty much what I have set up right now. Um, and again, this is where you can uh, change the frequencies depending on, you know, what you're trying to analyze. If you're trying to analyze a stock for a swing trade or for, you know, a day trade. So let's say you really want a day trade uh, DCTH, which is not something that I would do um, because it's less than $1. But we can identify, you see the support here within $1 uh, to um, 13 cents and a resistance here at around 14 cents. So we've identified, you know, this one cent profit margin. Um, and since this is such a low cap stock, that's about almost 8%. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. So that's how you um, use the frequency setup. Now you guys might be asking me, well, what the heck? How are you drawing these lines? Again, you go to drawing tools right here, um, and then you go to right here, drawing tools. And I, I use the trend line. The trend line allows me to calculate, you know, the percentage. I just click on it and then move it up. Um, and then it tells me like, you know, what the potential for profit is. It allows me to analyze a stock pretty quickly. If you want to draw a very quick line, uh, just because if you do this, use this trend line, you can, you know, move it around however it is that you want. Um, what, you know, you can do is you can go here, go to drawing tools and go to price level and then you can just double click so um, let's say it has another resistance here at about 17 cents really 18 cents um, uh, let me just draw one at 17 cents just so it's a little bit nicer I just double click and it draws a perfectly straight line therefore making it easier for me to identify the supports and resistance and being able to break it down a lot easier uh, so that's how you do that you can change the styles of uh, the candlesticks if you don't like the candlesticks and you just like the little trend lines uh, then that's something that you can change um, all through here. So tick and range and then the daily charts and gives you all different frequency settings. Um, we're going to go to settings next. So the settings, what that's used for is that's pretty much how I have mine set up. So uh, let me kind of go down the list on what I have um, set up on mine that's rather unique. Some people ask me how do I have my volume. Um, if you guys can see that my volume is overlapped um, on my um, actual chart, um, what I do is I simply go to overlap volume. I check this. So make sure that you look and compare yours compared to mine and see what the difference is. So I have show orders, alerts. That's something a lot of people ask me, you know, um, how is it that when I set an alert, it doesn't show like this nasty, um, you know, usually when you set alerts, it shows like this nasty thing and I don't like it getting in the way. So what I do is I simply go to settings and I simply go to, where's that? Alerts and then just show arrow and it shows the arrow. Um, on the right hand side, making it that much easier for me to, you know, just know where my alerts are, um, but without it, you know, actually interfering with, with my actual charting and stuff like that. So um, that's that. Going down the list, we did alerts, show studies, highlighted studies um, as I cover. So that means like as I drag my cursor, it will highlight the study. 
Um, show high and low bubbles. Yep. Price point extended orders. Yep. I mean, I can uh, click that as well. So show trades if I wanted to show my trades. Show symbol logo. Um, snap drawing tool. Yeah, that's something that you can do. Synchronize cross service positions. Uh, the overlap, the volume, right? Let's move on to the next one, price axis. Um, didn't do uh, too much here on this specific thing. So what I did do is, actually no, expansion area, I did do this. People ask me how is it that, you know, this is where the price point is and I have an expansion area which allows me to see uh, beyond, you know, where the ticker symbol is right now which makes it a little bit easier for me to, you know, not just have to have it right on the um, right hand side. Um, but it allows me to have more room to kind of like, you know, just, it, it's just, I, li I like having it like that. So again, you go here, you go to price axis, um, and this is where you do it. Expansion area, I have mine at 326. You can set yours up at whatever time, and it allows you to see a little bit more beyond what you have the uh, have it set up as. Uh, display, I have all these turned on. I have these turned on one minute, one day, because that's the frequency that I'm in. Um, yep, enable left axis, all this is set up. Alrighty, appearance. So I have my, some people don't have the green candle six filled. I like mine filled. Um, and I like them to be the bars uh, or the candle. And that's what I like. So again, this is my setup. Equities, um, this is pretty much what I have right here. Highlighted extended trading uh, area. So I, I want to be uh, or be aware what's, you know, extended or pre-market. So I have that, you know, to be highlighted, uh, which means they graze it out and stuff like that. So this is what I have set up on mine. Strikes eight options show volume subgraph. All this is all set up, so you can take a look at this and compare it to yours. All this, this is how mine is set up, and then forex and stuff like that. But yeah, that's pretty much it when it comes to the actual settings. Uh, let's move on to studies. How is it that I add, you know, RSI indicators and MACD indicators? Um, well, again, you just make your way right here to the studies chart and you click, you know, add or edit studies. So I can click add studies. Um, I would just uh, click edit studies because you can actually search for it. Um, and you can click, you know, the MACD indicator. And by clicking on it, it adds it right here. And then you can move it around if you want it to be on the lower quartile um, or to actually be on the price line. Um, and it will um, overlap the MACD indicator on this, but then it looks like there's too much going on. I'll show you guys what I mean. So if I move it here um, and then click OK, it overlaps the MACD indicator and it's very difficult to be able to see everything because there's too much going on here. So again, click Edit Studies and then MACD indicator, I just move it to the lower quartile and that is it. I like it better right here um, and, and that's really just it. So I have the RSI indicator here as well. And again, how do you do that? I think that it's best to go to studies, edit study, and then you can just search up RSI indicator. And I do RSI right here. You can click on it, then I'll add it here, and you can overlap it if you want, or if you don't have to. Um, and that's really just it. That's how you edit and add studies and how you can search for it and you know add it to different things. You can edit each option. This is how I have mine set up. So you can stop mine, and if you like how I have mine set up, I have mine at close 10, negative five, close nine, zero no um, and then these different um, setups right here so you can compare those to yours so now all right I'll just move the chart just so we kind of get things going um, let's go ahead and go down the list how is it that I add a stock to my watch list um, well like let's say I search up something right so let's say right now JNUG isn't in my watch list I removed it and we can go right here and it's as simple as, you know, going here and going on the right hand side, click on it, you click on it, um, you click add JNUG to studies and it's as simple as that. So uh, by being able to do that, then, you know, it adds it directly to your watch list um, and allows you to at least be able to stay up to date. Um, something that I kind of navigate my watch list through is once you develop and build your watch list, um, I have them linked together. So you can see that, you know, it can be unlinked. And then by being unlinked, every time that you click on it, you have to, you know, type in DCTH or you have to type in AMD. By linking my watch list to, you know, like number one red and then the chart to red, I can simply click on AMD and click on INFY rad DNR and I don't have to actually search for it one by one. Um, it's just a much smoother thing. I could even go down with my um, arrows um, and it just goes down the list and stuff like that, making it that much easier for me. So... Um, now when it comes to the actual watch list, um, you just like double click it depending on how it is that you want to arrange your watch list from top to bottom. If you want to go from, you know, last price, percentage change, net change, 
if it's increasing or decreasing volume. Um, I like volume since I like focusing on stocks that I can get quickly in and out of, um, and that's the breakdown that I like. So um, you just double click on it, and that is it. Um, now another question is, um, how is it that you scan for stocks? Um, so you can go here to the scanning option, um, and I already have mine set up, so you might want to uh, you know check it out and you can change it according to yours. So I have last minute, one minute, um, max 30 minutes, so it filters that. Um, and then you can add another filter, then you can add this, stock, volume, minimum, 1,000, maximum, um, you know, well, there's really no maximum. Um, and then study, um, so you can add study, um, and you can just go to add study filter. Uh, study, price change, um, and by being able to do that, you click open, is at least 3% um, or greater than 4 bars, include extended hours, 30 minutes, and that is pretty much it. So then by being able to scan for that, um, it comes up with this series of options of sucks that are, you know, gapping up and, and stuff like that. So uh, making it that much easier for me to kind of go down the list and be able to scan for stocks. If you guys want a more in-depth uh, video, uh, then feel free to search up on the YouTube search bar, uh, TD Ameritrade Think or Swim, uh, and then put my name, Ricky Gutierrez. I made a video um, explaining, you know, a little bit more in detail on how to scan for stocks and how to identify potential. So um, now let me go ahead and go back to the charts. Some of you guys were asking me, like, how is it that you buy or sell on TD Ameritrade? That's not something that I actively do on TD Ameritrade since I use Fidelity as my brokerage company. Uh, I use uh, TD Ameritrade as more as uh, as just a uh, platform where I can analyze real time and see have access to real time quotes. Uh, so again, this is level two. If you don't have access to level two, you have to subscribe to level two. Uh, therefore, you can reach out to a TD Ameritrade rep and they can guide you through that whole process. Um, but then you can click Active Trader, um, and in Active Trader you can buy at market, sell at market, and then according to you know the settings that you have set up, um, you can um, you know set it up however it is that you that you want, um, you know what buttons you want and stuff like that. So uh, sell at ask and stuff like that, and then you can click like on add item and stuff. Uh, but you know it's much easier to be able to like you know go in and get out and stuff like that, and um, it sets up your whole order and stuff like that. But um, other than that. I um, just wanted to break it down for you on how you guys do have access to doing that. It allows you or gives you multiple options. So there's um, the active trader, uh, there's the big button, depending if you like that setup uh, even more. Um, and then there's the time and sales. So you can use this one. And then after time and sales, you can use trade. Um, so trade puts the price in right here. And then when you actually place a trade, it pops up like with a little um, bar down here. And then you can edit um, that whole thing. So. Um, that's pretty much the breakdown for TD Ameritrade on how I have mine set up. Um, to zoom in and stuff like that, simply what I do is um, like when I do things like this, like if I want to focus on um, more areas or if I want to like zoom out, um, I can simply um, you know zoom out this way or if I want to zoom in or zoom out, um, then I just click, I drag and hold, and then I just click within the area that I want to focus on, making it that much easier for me to focus on, you know, just more critical or more detailed you know, price points and stuff like that. So uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, if you guys did, please feel free to give it a thumbs up. If I didn't explain um, or answer all your guys' questions, you know, it's as simple as just commenting down below uh, and requesting for me to make a video on a specific topic that you guys would like me to do. Um, and you know, I'd be more than happy to actually develop the video for you. All right, and for those that want to be a part of TechBit Solutions, once you, again, the link is going to be down below. It is a free Facebook group. We have a little bit now, I think over 35,000 members uh, within our group. Yeah, 35,000 overall, 40,000 members, including all the different group chats and platforms we have available. So the link to the group chat is right here on the top pinned post. So once you get accepted, feel free to join. We have a one-to-one -one video call um, with Ricky, which is me. Um, so feel free to schedule that if you see value in that. And then we have, you know, all the different people that we have as a part of Techpo Solutions. Uh, you can subscribe to them here. Uh, this is the ticker symbol and how we have all that set up. And then just kind of the rules that uh, we would like you to um, encourage within our platform. Um, I want to thank you guys for everything that you guys do. If you guys have not subscribed, you know, we'd greatly appreciate it. And if you guys could subscribe to, um, you know, the rest of the team, Connor, who's a momentum trader, Brad, an OTC stock trader, and Kyle is a day trader as well, as well as he does have a side hustle of being able to buy and resell different products um, online and on Craigslist as well, which allows him to bring in a little bit um, from about five to $8,000 a month. Uh, so feel free to check him out as well. So thank you again for everything that you guys do. Continue working hard, continue following your dreams, and like always, let your passion be what drives to your success. Um, like always, guys, let's make sure that we end the year on a green note. Take care.